Hey, so I'm gonna make you guys a video. Yeah, because I know you like those. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about general relativity and uh, quantum mechanics. These are two uh, totally different theories that everyone wants to unite into one giant theory because quantum mechanics describes uh, small particles and uh, general relativity describes like large, large, like huge distances and stuff. And to get a one coherent picture, you'd want to you'd want to use both, especially since uh, quantum mechanics describes three of the fundamental forces. And, General relativity describes the last one. Only problem is, uh, in quantum mechanics, events have a probability that occur in space and time, where space and time are independent variables. But in uh, general relativity, space and time are uh, subject to change depending on different variables, such as uh, such as momentum and space and time. And uh, events are are directly occur. They're not. They don't, they don't depend on probability. Okay, so the first thing is that uh, the reason why general relativity could be used to describe uh, a traditional classical field, like the kind that's eventually led to quantum mechanics, because there's a if you have more charge, if you have more mass, then there's more gravitational charge, so the force is stronger. But mass is also inertia, so you need a stronger force to pull a larger mass. So if you have more mass, you have more charge and more inertia. So uh, things with large masses will accelerate at the same rate as things with small masses. Because even though the large masses have larger mass, they also have larger inertia and are harder to move. So uh, in relativity, things move accelerate at the same rate not because they're accelerating, but because they're traveling long geodesics in space-time. Um, such as when they're... They, move more in space than in time when they're uh, in the direction of mass. It's basically what gravitational acceleration is in general relativity. They don't actually accelerate, they just stop moving in time. Time slows down as you perceive them and uh, they start moving more in space. So, there's also a couple of things that uh, general relativity describes a lot better than uh, classical Newtonian mechanics, for instance, time dilation, which was confirmed in the pound replica experiment, also geodetic precession, which was uh, confirmed in the gravity probe B experiment, which is a lot more recent. There's also, there's many others, but uh, basically general relativity can account for Newtonian mechanics and, uh, and a lot more. Yeah, so uh, quantum mechanics is basically derived from Newtonian mechanics. Uh, but it's a little different, it's a lot more probabilistic. Um, when you get to quantum field theory, you start treating uh, bosons, carrier particles, as, a, as the force carriers between different types of charges. Basically, uh, it's kind of a scattering model, like billiard balls, a photon will scatter off an electron, transfer some of its momentum, which will cause it to accelerate. And uh, that's one of the ways the electromagnetic interaction occurs so uh, if gravitons are energetic disturbances, uh, like light, they have an energy, and they're the charge carriers of gravity, then, well, first of all, you would think that they would be, because if they transfer gravitational waves, then they would have to be energetic, because there's energy transmitted in gravitational waves. But if gravitons are energetic, then they could never escape a, a black hole from the center because they would have the same type of energy that light does. So the gravitational force of a black hole would never escape from a black hole and uh, they couldn't, you couldn't accelerate, or black holes would have no gravity because they would have no force carriers. They would get sucked back in. Also, um, gluons from the strong nuclear force, they also have uh, their charge charge carriers, but they <clears throat> they're a uh, very short range force, not infinite like gravitational force. So you can form basically little balls around, like like blue balls for instance, which are only made of gluons. So in addition, <sighs> once you have some uh, 
once you start releasing, releasing gravitons, these uh, charge carriers, they become sources of energy themselves. You need more gravitons to, uh, to release, to transmit the gravitational force from those gravitons. And uh, basically, uh, energy isn't conserved because this is a long-range force. So basically, you have gravitons releasing gravitons releasing gravitons forever. They've also done experiments to see if they can separate uh, mass charge and mass inertia, the Norved effect, but uh, that wasn't, it, they weren't able to prove it. So, uh, in addition, space-time curvature and general relativity is a local effect. Uh, mass warps space-time. Uh, space-time lo locally affects mass. There's no action at a distance like Newtonian mechanics. So you don't need an intermediate mass to transfer the action. Space-time, since, I mean, if you think about it, since, uh, since space-time is different, there's different world lines and different histories, you'd have to use a local concept of it, because, uh, my reality obviously is a your reality if your time is progressing at a different rate than mine is. Okay, so, uh, it's also been suggested that you should, uh, quantize gravity, or no, instead of quantizing gravity, she quantized space-time. Um, I don't know. I did a, I actually wrote a huge negation of that, because I didn't think it makes sense. But, uh, one of the points I'll bring up right now is that space-time isn't a field that has no direction or magnitude. Fields exist in space and time, therefore space-time doesn't collide or interact with matter. Yes, so when uh, so when gravitational waves pass, they distort space-time, but it goes back the way it was uh, after the wave passes, so uh, momentum can't be transferred that way.